First things first, this is not the word of God. This is just what I have developed through trial and error and what I believe to be the single best method for targeting every species of trout, as well as targeting some very large fish. This video is going to consist of three parts, where to fish, gear, and the method of fishing itself. My goal is that by the end of this video, you will have the tools to find the right places, on the right lakes, bring the setup and gear you need, and fish effectively in a way that in my opinion is the most enjoyable and effective way to fish for wild trout. So, if you want to fish this method effectively, you have to know where it is going to work effectively. There are two very simple, very crucial steps to this. Step one is picking a good lake. Now, of course, this is going to vary somewhat depending on the region you live in, but for the most part, I look for the biggest lakes around me, and if you live near multiple large lakes, extra points if you do some Googling and find evidence that other people have caught big trout in your lake. Step two is to find the biggest river flowing into the lake and find the biggest river flowing out of the lake. One or the other or both of these are usually going to be by far the biggest concentration points of fish in the whole lake, and the best places to fish with jigs. So on this lake, the inflow is on this end, and as you can see, it's quite a large inflow flowing in right at the corner of this end of the lake. And again, at the other end of the lake, the main outflow is right here. Okay, so this isn't it in terms of where to fish. These two rules of number one, finding a big lake that you know has trout in it, and number two, finding the biggest inflow and or outflow are merely to narrow down the general area of where to fish from this whole giant lake to two very specific areas. Stay tuned for the method section of this video where I narrow down these inflow and outflow areas to very specific spots, types of cover, and explain exactly how to fish them. For the gear section of this video, I'm gonna be going over three things, rod and reel, the line you're gonna to wanna to use, and jig weights slash patterns. So my recommendation for the rod and line may vary a little bit depending on the size of fish in your body of water. However, in my opinion, the closest I have gotten to a perfect setup is the Daiwa Spinmatic Ultralight in the seven foot six model rated for two to six pound test, which is this rod right here. This may sound light, but I regularly land four and five pound trout without any problems, and I've even landed a 12 pound steelhead in a river I accidentally hooked on this exact setup, which is in an old video on this channel, by the way. The exact reel is less important, but I use a 2000 size P. Fluger President, or not P. Fluger, it's just pronounced Fluger. <laughs> In terms of line, I use 10 pound braid with a six or seven foot liter of four pound fluorocarbon. I do this because in some situations with a really deep drop off, you really want to feel those lethargic strikes 20 feet below the surface. To connect my main line to my leader, I use a crazy Alberto knot. Blood knots also work, but I like the Alberto knot for light line like this. I'm not gonna show you how it's tied in this video. There are many detailed tutorials online. As far as jig weights go, I would probably recommend carrying 16th ounce, 8th ounce, and quarter ounce jigs as 99% of the time that will cover everything for you. For patterns of jigs, I'm going to recommend three main jigs that to me work the best and are the most versatile for all species of trout. Number one, the pink worm jig. This jig has caught me some of my biggest cutties and bows ever, and you really just can't go wrong with it. Number two is the Jenko Fishing Mermaid Soft Plastic. This jig has caught me my personal best brown trout, and it was actually what got me into jig fishing for trout in the first place. One day I had been trying spoons, crankbaits, and fly fishing with no luck all day. I put on this weird looking yellow and brown buggy thing, and on the first cast caught my personal best cutthroat at the time. Number three, Tied Black Marabou Jigs. There are lots of different colors of marabou jigs that work, but honestly, straight black or black and a secondary color like red, maybe with some flash, might just be the most versatile jig for every species on this list. Black jigs can imitate a lot of things like leeches, and it just works. 
One last thing I should definitely go over in the gear section is what watercraft I recommend to fish from. Now obviously there's a wide variety of options here, but I'm going to simplify this. I highly recommend, and I think this method is most effective, when you fish from something human powered like a float tube, kayak, pontoon boat, etc. The reason I say this is when you're casting towards shore, fishing the drop off, a lot of the time you are very physically close to the fish, and the lower impact and smaller the watercraft you are in is, the closer you can get without spooking the fish. And trying to get right close to shore with your floating lawnmower just doesn't work nearly as well. So if you are going to try this method from a boat, I highly recommend using an electric trolling motor. So now you have picked out a big lake that you know has wild trout in it, you did a little Google Maps research and found the biggest inflow and or outflow. And you have your ultralight rod set up with braid, a fluorocarbon leader, and one of the three jigs that I recommended, hopefully. So now it's time to get into the real sh**. That right there is the river flowing into this big, beautiful lake. This is the first step. Get yourself right here in front of the inflow slash outflow. From here, things can vary a bit. Sometimes the best fishing is going to be literally right in or right beside the river outflow, but sometimes it can be hundreds of meters or even kilometers away. It all depends on where the best features and cover are, but it's always going to be somewhere in this area. So now you're here. The next step is obviously to start fishing. Like I said before, the first thing you wanna do is literally start by casting right into the river that is flowing in or out of your lake. From here here you're just going to work your way along the contours of the shore, casting towards the shore and towards the drop off. Really working your way along every inch of shoreline can pay off a lot, as well as looking for cover and features along the drop off. Okay, so now that we've gone over starting at the river outflow and working your way away from it, now I'm going to go to even more detail into exactly how I fish. So now you've made some casts into the main outflow and you've started to fish your way along the drop off away from it. The most important thing in this whole video, and literally if this whole video could be one sentence, it would be fish the drop off. That is it. Sometimes the drop off can be right to the side shore, like in this case where I'm about to literally cast and almost hit those tree boughs. And even there, it's about 10, 20 feet deep right below them. Sometimes the drop off can be a little extended out from the visible shore. But either way, the way you should fish it is to position yourself as far as you can away from the drop off, which in this case is right under those trees, while still being able to make a reasonable cast that goes right to the top of the drop off. Ideally, even if the top of that drop off is very shallow, one feet deep, whatever, you wanna cast right to the top of that drop off and just really, really slowly let your jig fall down and swing it as close as you can to the drop off as possible while you give it some small twitches. So exactly what I'm doing here is using one of the three jigs I recommended, which is a very simple rig. It is a pink eighth ounce jig head with a soft plastic pink worm on it. And the drop off, like I said, is basically right under those tree boughs. So I am casting like that pretty much within inches of the tree branches and I am just very slowly reeling, sometimes not even reeling at all. All that you're really trying to do is reel in a little bit of that slack as it falls so that if you get a strike, you'll be able to tell. But by far the most important thing is you're really slowly, slowly reeling and you're letting it fall. Letting it fall is crucial. 90%, I would say, of the hits I get are on the fall between twitches. This is quite a deep drop off, so as you can see the twitches that I've been doing are quite few and far between. And you'll just have to adjust that depending on how heavy of a jig you're using, how deep the water and drop off is you're fishing, but you really just want to swing your jig down that drop off while you twitch it. I know I've probably said drop off about 13 times in the past 60 seconds, but it's for good reason. That is what I want you to focus on, fishing the drop off. Okay, so from here on out, all of this footage is from one day. It's really important to me that I make that clear. All of the fish and action in this video is from one day, and I hope that gives you a glimpse of the potential jig fishing has. Got one.
All right, how about that? I unfortunately didn't film the strike of that because I just turned off the camera, but I was casting straight, almost hitting those logs right there. Oh, that's a good one. On the pink worm jig, and I just got whatever this is, which I'm pretty sure is a good cutty. That's what he looks like. Good fish, very good fish. Got him. One for one. Uh, nice cutthroat. One really big benefit to this method is uh, using single hooks, especially barbless, which is what I always use, uh, really, really, really can help with the whole unhooking thing. A lot of the time it pops out right in the net after you net the fish immediately. And that is how you do it right there. Have a look at that beautiful chrome cutthroat trout, which we are now gonna send on his way. So that fish right there was on one of the three main jigs that I am recommending in this video, which is the pink worm jig. Oh, and dad has hooked his first fish of the day here. Ah, uh, damn. Dad has got another, fi another fish in that exact same spot. He says this is huge. Maybe a steelhead, he says. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'll pop the pedal drive. If I pop the pedal drive, you have to stay right. Actually, no, I'll pop the pedal drive and I'll use the paddle. That's good, that's what we want. It looks huge, I'm, I'm betting that's a steelhead. So when it gets to the surface, you gotta be close enough for me to net it. Oh yeah, that's a good, good, good fish. I'll just, yeah, yeah I'll just hold on to you. You worry about the fish, I'll hold on to you. You worry about the fish. He's too deep, he's too deep. Oh no, come on, pull him a bit. Okay, let's try and get him right here. There we go. That is a really big cutthroat. Ooh, you know, it's still bigger than that one last week you got, but. Yeah, but it's as big as that. Yeah, but it's as big as that. And on a jig pattern that I don't use super often, chartreuse is another color yeah, that works. Yeah. How about that? Barbless hooks on a black and chartreuse jig. That is a big cutthroat. All right, we're gonna try. Dad's not so great at this, but we're gonna no, try Dad's and get bad at this, just, you know. a little shot of this monster cutty. I haven't screwed that up. Okay, we're gonna get an underwater release here. so far so any support in the form of likes any feedback in the comments or subscribing to this channel for more content like this really means a lot to me oh dad has got another fish on here another good one he says Oh, that's a big fish. That might be a steelhead. No, that's a cutthroat. You gotta tow him this way more. I can't reach out any. But this way, this way, this way. There we go. Got him. You got him. That is a, another big one trolling along the drop off, right? So, as my dad just demonstrated, especially when you're using a bigger jig like this, it's also possible to troll along the drop off, especially a deeper drop off, even with this method. In a float tube. Yeah, in a float tube. <laughs> and obviously, it 
can work. And on that same oh, yeah, that's 3 8 ounce green jig, that's another big fish, Dad. That's a big fish. I know. Yeah, that's good. That fish. is good. That could be 20 3, but. Oh. <laughs> I can't even re-tie here. I've been trying to tie a stupid knot two times in a row because I broke my leader off and both times dad has hooked a fish. And this one it looks like he hooked in a lot shallower water but he's still using that 3 8 ounce jig along the upper part of the drop off. There is no way you have hooked three over 20 inch cutthroat. Oh, no, this is a bow. Yeah, this is a bow. <laughs> that might be a cutthroat actually. Might just be, oh no, that's probably a bow. There we go. What are you, buddy? That might just be a silver cutthroat. Yeah, that's a very silver cutthroat. And the hook popped out in the net, as is what happens a lot of the time with a barbless hook, which is why we love this type of fishing. It is very easy to release this, these fish, and it is very low impact on these fish compared to using bait or trolling with a heavier rod and some big geary setup. With this, low impact on the fish during the fight and it is low impact on them when you release them and that is what we are gonna do right now and as well as switching things up and using a heavier jig like a 3 8 ounce jig we have run into situations where using very light jigs 16th ounce even 32nd have been paramount to catch some very big fish so get a feel for the water you're fishing get a feel for where the fish are in the water column and like i said using a 16th ounce 8th ounce or 3 8 ounce jigs should pretty much cover all of your bases There's a fish, got one, on the pink worm. Oh yeah, that feels pretty good. Don't know how good yet, but we will see. How big are you, buddy? He's in the glare, so I really can't tell. Oh yeah, there he is, that's a good fish. That's a really good one. That is for sure. Very silver fish. Oh my God, he's giving me a nightmare here. Got him, yes! There we go, on the pink worm jig. Finally starting to catch up a little bit to my dad here. Fish. Yeah, thank you. There is that fish right there. Another over 20 inch cutthroat on the twitch jig method. That right there is why I do this method. Oh yeah, that, that's a bow, that's a bow. Oh, that was on a pink worm. Eighth ounce pink worm jig. And that is a 15 or 16 inch bow. A kayak down the road in the yeah. snow and I thought, well, I, can, I don't know if I could drive in there or not. So. Yeah, yeah, a lot better today. <laughs> yeah, much better. Yeah, thank you. Although, ironically enough, I'm about to lose this fish, one huge plus with this method is I lose a very low percentage of fish. In fact, today I landed every fish except this one, and in last week's video I landed seven of seven fish I hooked. A fairly long ultralight rod is extremely good at keeping pressure on the fish, along with a light jig that keeps a point of leverage, better than with small crankbaits or trolled plugs, and way better than spoons. And there it is. I even think I lose less fish with this method than when I fly fish, because it's just easier to keep pressure on the fish when it runs at you or in an awkward direction. Got him. There we go. It's definitely fighting like a little bow, and that I think is what it is. Hey there, little buddy.
There we go. And both this little bow and that last cutthroat that I lost were on a tied marabou jig. So this is black with a little bit of red. Yeah. Oh, dad's got one on here. Although I've had a lot of success with this method in rivers as well, including all of the nuances of how I fish jigs in both lakes and rivers would take too much time to cover in one video. So this video is going to be focused on how I catch big trout specifically in lakes. However, I probably at some point will make a version of this video for river fishing. Really, it might be a bow. Try and bring it onto your right side here. Oh, very silver. There we go, beauty. That is a cut, uh, I cut throat, <laughs> cut, bow. cut something throat, rainbow. There we go, have a look at how fat that cutty is. It's worth mentioning that this method works year-round, but I probably have the most success in the winter and early spring months. Sort of December through March seems to be the golden zone for me. But like I said, things can be different in different regions or even lake to lake. And a good example of that is that even though these winter and early spring months can be great at outflows and inflows, I have found some amazing fishing in midsummer with jigs in lakes that have very, very cold rivers running into them. So as the lake warms, the big fish can concentrate in the colder, more comfortable water. In that specific situation, I often find good fishing in the area surrounding the outflow, like explained in this video, but also quite far up the river itself, which can be very enjoyable fishing. Anyway, a bit of a tangent here. The point is, this fishing does have specific times and places it works very well, but almost all year there is great jig fishing somewhere. The challenge is to find it. There we go. It's getting a little later here. And on one of my hand-tied black marabou jigs, I just hooked into something good here. All right, what are we working with here? That looks like, whoa, my God, that's a big one. I just recorded that. Oh my God, I knew this thing was big already, but I, didn't know it was that big. I gotta pop my pedal drive up here. This thing could get caught in it. This is a big fish. Oh my God, and this is my most energetic fish of the day by far. Holy. He wants to go under the boat. Oh, he's doing all the wrong things. Stop trying to go under the boat. Stop trying to go under the boat. Oh my God, this fish is fighting so hard holy come on buddy oh that might be a bow i don't know let's get you the net yes there we go that is my biggest of the day and that is a cutthroat i thought it was a bow with all that jumping oh yeah it's it's a good 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 condition fish he was barely hooked that right there is one of my favorite jig patterns to use period black with red tinsel oh that was nice although we didn't catch too many rainbows today in both last week's video and the next upcoming video after this i caught rainbows over 20 inches in this same lake well, all of the batteries are empty, except the one on this last GoPro here. But have a look at that fish right there. That is not a bad way to end it off. Such an unbelievably fat, beautiful silver cutthroat trout. Man, I have run out of battery with both of the Hero 7 batteries and I'm starting to use up, and I'm starting to really use up the battery with this stupid camera too. 
because we're catching so many god fish. Be back off here because I just took my pedal drive up. Oh, there he goes. Damn. Swimming straight towards me. Maybe it's this might be a little guy. That is not a little guy. That is definitely not a little guy. <laughs> oh, he's doing all the worst things here. He's just shaking and shaking and shaking. And I got him. There we go. These are just super, super silver cutthroat. And there is that chrome cutthroat trout right there. Beauty. Anyway, that pretty much wraps things up. Although we mainly caught cutthroat the day we filmed this video, I have caught big brown trout, big rainbows, and of course, big cutties like the ones today on jigs. This is a method I've developed over a long time, and now I'm sharing what I've learned. Most people seem to think all trout fishing in lakes is, is getting in your boat and trolling, but I'm here to show you a way that is more skillful, more fun, is easier on the fish when you fight and release them, and is the single best way to target big wild trout in my opinion. Like this video, it helps support my channel and get this video picked up more by the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you are new for more content like this and let me know down in the comments what you think about this guide on how to catch big wild trout.